Welcome to another episode of PT at All. I'm your host, Brian Payton, doing a solo show today. Very much in need of a haircut. The title of today's article is Characterizing the Recovery Trajectories of Knee Range of Motion for One Year After Total Knee Replacement. That's by Sarub Meta et al. Pardon my pronunciation. The article states that the optimal knee flexion range of motion required to achieve a satisfactory level of functioning after TKR has been defined to be as low as 95 degrees and as high as 130 degrees. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but TKR is total knee replacement. So 95 to 130, haven't had many patients close to that 95 haven't had a whole lot of patients close to that 130 either, but usually if they're going to be close to that 95 by a month into outpatient treatment, they will likely be getting some type of manipulation. And then usually about 120 to 125 is going to be the time that the patient discharges. But this is one year after, so this is about nine to 10 months after you've discharged the patient. The association between knee range of motion and patient satisfaction after TKR has been shown to be poor. So basically, even if your knee range of motion is looking good, you're close to that zero in terms of extension, you're close to that 120, which every surgeon wants their patients to get to in terms of flexion. That's all grand, but it doesn't mean that the patient is satisfied with the outcome of the surgery. They could still have pain, they could still have weakness, they could have instability, clicking, balance might not be there. There's a big picture to look at. So one thing about this article is it gives modules in terms of predictive values where the individual will end up in knee, with knee range of motion at 8, 12, 26, 52 weeks. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to put the graphs up on the video portion, but if you see them now, I looked into it and I was. The article states that in instances where the pre-surgery knee range of motion is not known, the weeks only model could be used to estimate the expected knee range of motion at a given follow-up interval. Knowing what you expect the patient to get is good to maybe temper expectations. I don't like to put a ceiling on those types of things. You just want to get as much as you can. If the patient tells you that the doctor says that they only expect them to get 110, that's great. I'm shooting for 115 or just some number higher than that. But if we get to 110, then it was kind of expected. So it's a, it can temper expectations, but you don't want to just get to that point and be done. Functional performance also shows a maximum change in the initial 12 to 16 weeks after surgery. So this kind of goes back to the satisfactory level. Range of motion and function are somewhat correlated. We'll go on to find that this article states that by the 12 week mark post operation, range of motion has pretty much achieved what it's going to achieve with slight improvements into the 2652 week mark. Measures assessing functional performance such as timed up and go test, six minute walk test, and stair test all showed maximum recovery in the first 12 weeks after a total knee replacement. Maximum gains in six minute walk tests occurred in the first 12 weeks with small gains observed up to 26 weeks. Function, you're gonna get the majority of your benefits uh, in 12 to 16 weeks, so there's a little bit longer of a window there to improve your strength, balance, functional mobility, etc. Previous research has clearly established that required knee range of motion in order to successfully perform functional activities such as walking, less than 90 degrees, climbing stairs or sitting down getting up from a chair, between 90 and 120 degrees, or entering a bathtub, 135 degrees. It says less than 90 degrees for walking, much less than 90 degrees for walking. It says between 90 and 120 degrees for climbing stairs, getting in and out of a chair. That's height dependent, but I think that those numbers are good, especially for getting out of a chair. If you are a taller individual going up a standard six foot step, you're not going to need close to that 90 degrees of flat knee flexion. 
knee flexion range of motion of at least 110 degrees or greater is required for optimal performance in functional activities following total knee replacement with knee flexion greater than 120, not yielding additional functional gains. So we always shoot for 120. This article states that knee flexion range of motion of at least 110 or greater is required for optimal performance. Um, I would say that's pretty, pretty accurate unless you are a taller individual getting out of a standard height chair, trying to get off the floor, things of that nature that might require a little bit more knee flexion. This article found predictive ranges for 2, 8, 12, 26, and 52 weeks post-op from a total knee replacement. It predicted that two weeks post-operative, so at the time where most patients will be entering outpatient physical therapy, would be about 99 degrees. And I, I think that's accurate, usually between 105 or 95 and 102, somewhere around there. At eight weeks, you're looking at an 11 half degree improvement. At 12 weeks, you're looking at a 14 and a half degree improvement. And at 26 weeks, you're looking at 16 and a half degree improvement with an additional degree gained between the 26 and 52 week marks. For a total ending at 17 and a half degrees gained after starting at about 99 and a half, 100 degrees per this article. With that being said, I would say most of my patients, as well as many of the people I talk to, get to 120 degrees. It's the, there are certainly the asterisks or the, the anomalies that get to 105, 100, 110, that kind of skew these numbers. Um, but I would say the median would be around that 117 to 120, just like the article states. It was a little bit trickier for them to talk about extension because the article states that the extension models applied a robust variance estimate. The only significant covariate to enter the extension model in addition to weeks was pre-total knee replacement extension. So prior to surgery, total extension that the patient had was a good predictor of post 12, 26 weeks of what the patient would have after the operation. But the robust variance estimate means that it was hard to predict. There wasn't a strong correlation between time and knee extension at the 8, 12, 26 week. The new finding in our study was that age at the time of surgery was associated with post total knee replacement knee flexion range motion, but not knee extension range motion. Being 10 years older resulted in an additional gain of 1.7 degrees knee flexion after total knee replacement. So if you're a little bit older, then you're actually gonna gain a little bit more flexion. The authors state that this was an unexpected finding since older age has been shown to be negatively associated with self-reported pain and function. So all this is kind of jumping back to the beginning of our talk where although they had about an extra two degrees of motion and flexion, there wasn't, that wasn't correlated to improved function and performance and self-reported pain. The results indicated that the greatest recovery in knee range motion should be expected within 12 weeks after a total knee replacement with very small further gains in both knee flexion up to three degrees and knee extension about a degree range motion up to 52 weeks after total knee replacement. So 12 weeks means that in standard outpatient physical therapy where the patient starts about two weeks after having the surgery is we have a 10 week window to really get the high majority of our patients uh, knee range motion improved. And I would say that the majority of the patients after eight weeks have improved knee, ra knee range of motion very close to their discharge goals. After that eight week period, we're working a little bit more on higher level balance, function, things of that nature, while still gaining some range of motion to that 12 week mark if they attend pa past the eight week mark. What are your experiences with treating patients with a total knee replacement? Comment below, like the video if you enjoyed it, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and we'll talk to you at the next one. Thanks, bye.